Greetings, I'm Bobby W6IWN. Today we're going to talk about the Retivus or Retivus, depends on how you say it, HS4 10 meter radio. It actually can be easily expanded for 10 and 12 meters for the amateur radio band with simply a press of some buttons and turning it off and on rather than any hardware changes. And I do believe that this is actually manufactured by Anytone and then rebranded by Alluance. Don't quote me, but I believe it is the same radio as the Anytone 5555. So we're going to jump right into how to expand the frequencies on this, how to program it with your computer, because you can do the 10 meter repeaters. And this would be a perfect starter radio for someone that is a tech that's never worked HF and that wants to have HF capabilities. This does have your 10 meter bands. And I'm going to be upfront with you, 10 meters isn't always open and reliable as 20 meters, but when it is, it is a ton of fun. And I do have my general and 10 meters is still one of my favorite bands when it is open. So, and I do like that fact that it has the ability to work 10 meter repeaters. That is something that is pretty darn cool. And not going to lie, this thing is going to go in my vehicle. All right, we'll jump to the bench here in just a little bit and take a real close look at this and show you everything that comes in a box. And also, I found out it does come with an antenna. They shipped an antenna. I thought they just wanted me to test it. It also comes with a mobile antenna. So that's a pretty cool package. You get everything all in one except a way to power. All right, let's get to the meat and potatoes first and show you guys how to expand this from 10 meters to 10 and 12 meters because I'm sure that's what a lot of people are interested in. So what you're going to need to do is turn off the radio. Going to need to hold the emergency and the function key simultaneously while you start the radio and then you should be prompted with this and if you change the channel knob see how it says one band and then i should say two bands those are the only two options you're going to get so then you would select that hold the function key once again and continue to hold it See, now it says reset. Continue to hold that button until it says reset end. Now you can power down the radio, turn it back on, and as you can see, the frequency changed here. You're going to need to do a little bit of programming in the CPS to get it in the proper range of the 12 meter band, but that's not a big deal. So if you did want to reset it and just go back to the 10 meter band, you'd simply go through the same process. Turn off your radio, hold these two keys, the emergency and the function, simultaneously. You'll be prompted again with that. Select the one band, then hold the function key until it says reset. Continue to hold it until it says reset end. Turn off the radio, power it back on. As you can see, now I'm back in the 10 meter band. All right, let's show you how to navigate through this radio. Going through the frequencies is a little different. This thing is uh, kind of set up like a CB. So you have your, they say bands, I'm gonna call it sub bands. Once you change this, it jumps bigger. Everything's kind of channelized. It looks like it's going by 300 here each time. So for example, if I'm on A, channel one, that's gonna be here. If I change it to channel two, it's going to jump up five each time. So say you wanted somewhere in between, there's this clarifier knob you hear, and then you can uh, change that. If you press the button in here, you can change the digits on which you want to clarify. Once you're there, you simply hit the knob and then you can change the frequency to a certain extent with the clarifier. But yeah, you would just go through in here and then you can dial them in. It's a little bit different than uh, just tuning in normal. It definitely works, but it's uh, channelized and set up. And when I say CB, I believe CBs are 40 channels. It looks like this is set up for 60, and then one, two, three, four, five, six banks, A through F. So this will do repeaters. You can uh, program the offsets and the tones and everything in there. You need to go into the CPS to do it. I believe you can do it through the menu as well. It seems to be a little bit more difficult. Uh, but what I have my CPS set up for, I'm going to program to the radio, is just on this channel F. I'm going to have all of my 10 meter repeaters here. It also has a scan function 
or if you hit the scan button, it will go through. So that'd be great if you're trying to work some 10 meter repeaters. That's a lot of fun. Uh, this radio would be good for a tech that doesn't uh, think that he can do him or her, the HF, and you can work the HF bands. I'm gonna be straightforward with you though. 10 meters, it depends on the propagation and it's not gonna always be open and more dependable on bands like maybe 20 meters, for example. But when it is open, you can do a lot of cool things with it and have a lot of fun. So it looks like there's a noise blanker a &L on there. There's an emergency button that goes to a channel there, it seems like. Uh, you can lock it, your SWR. Another cool feature this radio does have, it does not have a tuner. However, it does have high SWR and high voltage alerts. So for example, now if I was to key up, let me show you, let me plug in the mic. Okay, for example, now that I have the mic plugged in, I do not have an antenna if I was to try to transmit. It will not let me do it. The SWR is too high. It doesn't want to burn out the radio. So it has that. It also has a high or low voltage feature that will help uh, protect your radio, which I do find cool because you can't burn these out. So you are going to need uh, a resonant antenna. So it. you have your volume in your squelch knob here. Um, I'm believing this E-tone is your echo. I have mine all the way to the left, so I'm not going to use it, but apparently it has an echo. And then you have your RF gain and your RF power here, and then the banks as we talked about. So this will do lower sideband, upper sideband, FM, so you can work your repeaters. It has AM, and we'll do 40 watts on AM, 35 watts, I believe, on sideband, and I think it's 12 watts on AM. It has a CW function. There is some settings in here for the CW. If you go through this function menu, or you hold the function menu, and then you keep tapping through it, there's a bunch of separate menus within here that you can uh, do other things with the radio. So yeah, there's your transmit DC tones and you receive. Uh, you need to look at the manual to kind of decipher what these are. I'll show you a little bit more online here in a second. Okay. They seem to speak of echo tone. I was wondering what that E knob was. I thought that's what it might be. I don't know. I have it turned off all the way to the left, but it does have uh, some sort of echo built in. But more important, it has 104 CT, CSS, and DCS tones. Why that's more important is because you can program your 10 meter repeaters, which I do find very useful. Uh, the SWR protection, which I will show up closer, a test on that, uh, so you don't burn up your radio. If your SWR is too high and you try to key up, it's going to let you know and it's going to show you a readout on the screen. Same with if you have high voltage or low voltage. Um, and there it's talking about the dual watch again. Uh, looks like it is compatible with a speaker microphone if you did choose to go that route it does have the four pin uh, like a cb type of microphone on there and it will also accept a dynamic mic as well uh, the backlight has three dim settings you can uh, you can dim the backlight if you'd like So I'll show you everything that's in the box too, but it does come with the programming man, the programming cable, the manual, the bracket for if you want to mount it, the power cable, the mic, all the screws, which it doesn't show here. It also comes with the knobs that for the bracket there. And then if you get the antenna, and I'll show all that up close here. Let's look at the specs, most important here. All right, what a lot of people are probably interested is in this power output. So according to these specifications am and cw are 1 through 12 watts hmm that sounds okay fm is 1 through 40 watts adjustable and then on your sideband you're going to get 35 watts and you have your am fm modulation all right let's take a look at something i do see on here though so they show the frequency range from 28 to 29 
seven on here. Let's take a look at the CPS because it shows it a little bit different on the CPS because that's not going to get you your 12 meters, right? You got to do that expansion. All right, I'll put links to everything below in the video description. But if you look at the top here, there's overview, spec, feature, reviews. And if you go to the support button, this is where you're going to get the CPS. And then it looks like if you're running Windows 11, you need a special driver. I can't confirm I don't run Windows 11. I'm doing it on Windows 10. And then you can also get the manual here as well. Okay, let's take a look at their manual. And it's actually pretty good and pretty clear for this radio. It is all in English. Everything is pretty labeled well. Um, there is one I wasn't seeing the codes for the CTA CSS tones in the manual that you can change in the radio. I might have been missing something. But they do give you stuff even like where to put the antenna, you know, what kind of radiation pattern you're going to get. I thought that was kind of helpful. A lot of people don't do that. Then it's going to show you everything on the screen, what it all means, which is definitely useful because this radio is the menus are a little different than uh, some of the radios. But it's going to give you a complete walkthrough of what the, the main button does, if the button under, if with the function keys, how to use the roger beep or turn the roger beep off um then, yeah there's a little th something for everything it's going to show you <clears throat> on the mic and then if there's i believe there's some special functions for that aq button if you press and hold it for longer and then also very important when you press and hold the function button and then you get all those weird menus that you don't know what they mean on the radio. This is where you're going to go and you're going to find out what they mean. For like example, number two is the dim menu. So you'll be able to find out what those 28 menus that are in the, if, when you hold the function that you can uh, change in there. It also tells you how to do a factory reset if you had any problems. Uh, so I, I think the manual is actually pretty decent. And it translates pretty well to English. Okay, let's take a look at the CPS. I've just opened it. Uh, it will probably pump up, pop up with something looking <clears throat> like this when you first open it. So if you're going to notice, there's going to be a select frequency band. This is going to be important if you do choose to expand it. The first selection is from 28 megahertz to 29.7 megahertz. If you go down into this one, you can see that it is from 24.7 to 30 megahertz, 30.1. Okay, that being said, you want to select the appropriate mode for however you are going to program it. You need to pl program that uh, USB cable into the back of the radio where it's labeled data and then plug it into your computer. The easiest way to find your COM port is if you go up here and click this button, you can either go up there or and go up to setup and go communication port. Uh, if you plug in the radio and already have it plugged in, drop down this list and if you just unplug that, okay, you noticed COM port 2 just disappeared, go ahead and plug the radio back in. Okay, you see COM port 2 just reappeared. So obviously that is going to be our COM port. So go ahead and select that for your COM port. I already did program this radio, so I'm going to show you <clears throat> what it looks like. So you can go up here to program and read from radio. And same, just like Chirp, you can also go down here and click read data from radio. I must note with Windows 10, I did incur a problem. If my COM port was above number nine or so, I believe, uh, it did not want to work. So if you, it, mine was showing up as COM port 25, for example. Okay, now that you've selected your COM port and you're able to read and write from your radio and you've chose the list that you want to do and your radio is open to those frequencies, I'm going to go ahead and uh, select this one. This is what I did. So I went into the band A, and I think I'm going to change this because I did it in uh, ten, steps of 10. So I went 2493 starting at the sideband phone portion of the 12 meter band, and I set that for channel 1. <clears throat> and then channel 2, I did 940. 
I think I'm going to change this to five steps of five. So it would be 935, 940, and so on, and so on, and so on. And that way I have the 12 meter band here on. So when I switch that knob to A, these channels are going to be corresponding into the 12 meter band. And then another thing I did to make it easy for the 12 meter repeaters, I just went all the way over here to F. And then I programmed in the 12 meter repeaters. Unfortunately, one thing I don't like about this CPS is you can see this screen here for programming. I cannot expand that. I have all of this room here, but I can't uh, open that any bigger. You're kind of limited to what it shows in here. But anyways, you would simply put in your receive frequency. You just program that in. So for this repeater, the receive is uh, 29680. And then you're going to put in the transmit frequency. And then if you go all the way over here, oh, and also, also there's this echo. I disabled that for some reason by default, it's enabled. I do have the echo all the way off. So I think it's still off even if it is enabled and you have that turned off. I just wanted to be safe. So this is going to be your receive tone. So if the repeater does have a receive tone, it's going to be on the left over here. This is going to be your transmit tone to program your repeaters. <clears throat> so yeah, I have all the 10 meters uh, repeaters I want in here programmed. And then I made sure to have the scan on. So that way when I have it in this mode and switch it to the, what they call band, uh, letter F, and then I can just scan through the 10 meter repeaters. So you could go through on each of these bands and then change the frequencies that are already preset in here to whatever frequencies uh, that you wanted for those channels and fine tune it any way which you liked. All right, so in the CPS, uh, looks like there's a couple other features in here. You can change all your mic gain. Uh, here's where you would mess with your CW, your slide tone. Uh, they're your frequency step. Oh, it looks like you can even turn the LCD on or off. So yeah, there's a bunch of stuff that you can uh, fine tune within here. And you can, oh, you can even turn off uh, modes or enable or disable them if you like. All your box settings. And then under local information, I'm not having anything pop up under embedded messages. Uh, this, oh yeah, see right there, that confirms it. So radio type AT. 55, 55. So this is definitely the Anytone 55, 55 radio. And it looks like, okay, this is the Alluance HS4 CPS. So there might even be an Anytone. Uh, I'm sure there's an Anytone CPS that you can use with this as well if you're interested in that. Uh, that's about it under here. So to write it to your radio, you would go up here to program and just click write to radio. And it's going to ask you, do you want to continue? Make sure you have the correct port selected. And then you're going to see this go across the screen. And then you'll notice on the display of your radio, it will say the letters PC. That means it is transmitting. All right, once that is done in the CPS, you're going to get this message that says data complete. And on your radio, the screen will display the word end. Simply turn your radio off and power it on. And your programming should now be active. All right, I wanted to thank everyone for taking the time to watch this. And if you are interested in the Retivis Alluance HS4 10 meter sideband ham radio, uh, Retivis, Retivis, however you want to say it, does have them on sale. I will put links below in their video description. Uh, it looks like at the time of this video, they're on sale for $214.99. Typically, they'll provide me with some sort of coupon code or to provide you guys with a discount. Uh, if that is the case, I will also post that in the video description below. 7-3, and we'll see you in the next one. Okay, let's check out the audio on this thing for a second. It's actually pretty decent. You got to keep in mind, though, the speaker is on the bottom, so if you set it flat, you're not going to be able to hear it that well. You need, it needs to be elevated, but it does come with a stand. Again. All right. To you. Enjoy the, enjoy Let's the see if we can't get this guy over there in Australia.